Good morning, everybody.
Okay, good morning, everybody. We are going to go ahead and get started. Um, and my co-host, Chris, is going to keep admitting people while we do this. So it looks like I had a poll out here asking about, um, you know, what grades you guys were teaching, just so that I could kind of highlight some of these STEM activities that we're talking about. I don't want to, um, or I didn't want to start talking more about like junior high or upper level um, STEM activities if we had, you know, a ton of people in the, in the grade school, younger grade school, but it looks like we kind of got a good spread. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and then let's see here. All right. So I'm really excited to have you guys all here. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is our third week of our uh, Illinois Ag in the Classroom team teaching or teacher training sessions. I feel like I haven't spoken in, you know, weeks. So this is kind of weird to be here. Um, it looks like we also do have some um, special ed uh, teachers in our audience as well. So that's really exciting. Um, I'll just start with an introduction of myself. Um, my name is Stephanie Hospelhorn. I am the education specialist here at the state level of Illinois Ag in the Classroom. Um, and I've been, uh, I'm just shy of five months with this position. Actually, Saturday will be my five month anniversary. Um, and I've been working mostly out of the office. So that's just been kind of a weird transition there, just like with this whole weird world anyways. Um, but just a little bit of background information about myself. I'm, I'm from Bloomington Normal. Um, and I have my uh, first bachelor's degree in uh, environmental sciences and art. So I studied ecology, bacteriology, things like that. And then my second bachelor's degree is in uh, middle level education. So uh, focusing on the sixth through eighth grade level. I taught two years of eighth grade science, um, uh, life science, biology, um, a year of sixth grade earth science, and then um, this previous year, I was teaching English language arts and social studies. So I do have um, some of that education background. Um, before we get started, let's see here. I wanted to also remind you guys, um, don't forget to fill out that reflection form. It was sent to you guys in the email with the, the links to get into um, this Zoom session. Uh, again, just like the last uh, two weeks, we are gonna be uh, you know, drawing some names and sending a prize to them. That prize is gonna be this children's book called 11 Experiments That Failed. And it's such a fun book um, to show your kids and uh, kind of get them, uh, it's a fun way of teaching them how to you know, make a hypothesis and then go through the steps and, um, and then make your conclusion. And it's just a really fun book. Um, on Thursday, uh, join us again, and Mackenzie Davison, she is from Illinois Beef Association. She's their intern this year, um, and she's gonna talk to us everything beef related. Um, and then Kevin will uh, spend the rest of that hour giving you uh, beef activities and, and how you can bring this into your classrooms. Um, next week is going to be the National Ag in the Classroom Virtual Summit, um, so don't miss out on there. We have some awesome presenters uh, and their sessions are, have really, really good information. Um, our Ag in the Classroom presentation is called Scrambled States, and so Kevin is going to take us through um, the uh, commodities and agriculture through all of the United States. And then there's going to be a STEM uh, focus session from Katie Buckley, and um, she is the Illinois Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year. So tune back in for her. She has so much awesome information about STEM, and she's doing so many cool things in her classroom. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss that. Um, along with that, uh, instead of it, our uh, normal Tuesday for the scrambled states, it's going to be on Wednesday and that actually starts at 8 a.m. So just make sure um, if you want to be a part of that to um, it's an hour earlier than we normally start. Okay, so today um, we're going to go through uh, STEM. Uh, basically, we're taking a closer look into STEM and how we can relate STEM with agriculture as another way of bringing ag um, into the classroom. Um, just so you guys know, if you have any questions um, or comments while I'm speaking, um, I'm not going to answer them right at that moment, but I do have uh, slides built in where we will pause and take a break and I'll go through and answer any of those questions that you have. Um, so just a little bit of outline of what we're doing today. Uh, first, we're just going to do a quick recap of STEM. 
Um, we're going to talk about how we can bring STEM and relate that to agriculture. Um, we're going to go into uh, ag-focused STEM activities, and I have a little bit of a process I'm going to share with you guys, and then I've got a lot of different example activities um, to, to kind of uh, share with you, just so that you get these ideas of, of how you can do these STEM activities in your classroom. Um, now there, I just want to, ahead of time, I am not like a STEM professional. I did do a lot of STEM in my classrooms when I was teaching. I've been through uh, for some professional development and whatnot. So um, just keep that in mind as I'm going through this. Um, with that, I do have another poll that we will do real quick. Let's see here. Just to get an idea of your understanding of STEM, so it's how familiar are you with the concept of STEM in terms of using it in your classroom. So you know what STEM stands for, but you're not really sure how to use it. Um, you use STEM in your classroom, but you don't know if you're doing it right. Um, you might use STEM, but you could probably be doing a little bit more. And then the last one is that you love STEM and you feel like you are a STEM rock star. So I'll give you a few minutes to get through that. I'm going to give about 15 more seconds. Okay, so it looks like we kind of have a mixture. No one necessarily feels like a rock star, which is absolutely fine. Um, I think that even people who have uh, been doing STEM for quite some time still feel like there's more that they can do. Um, so uh, the good news is that um, today in my presentation, I can, I'm can i definitely sharing ideas with you on um, how to implement STEM and all of those different ideas. So let's end this poll. Awesome job, thank you for participating in that. Um, and then we will get going. So STEM, um, it's a philosophy of education. We're talking about an interdisciplinary approach. So when we're talking about that, we're saying, um, instead of just focusing on math or social studies, we're tying all of these academic skills together, all these concepts together, um, so that they complement each other. Because when we get into the real world, we know that you know whatever position you're working, it's not just one thing. We're looking at many different of these concepts. Um, and so another thing is that you know, kids always ask like, when am I going to need to know this? When am I ever going to use this? And so using STEM is a great way to kind of push that out of their head and kind of make them forget that they're even learning. Um, a huge part of STEM is the fact that you want to connect these, um, these academic concepts with the real world, these real life skills that get they can take out into the world and be successful with. Um, a huge part that um, many times, and it's hard to do with very young students, but when you're into like junior high or upper level high school, you really want to make sure that you are connecting STEM to um, helping them identify and try to solve like real world problems. So that's kind of the step um, that a lot of people kind of miss out on. When you look up STEM on the internet, a lot of the things that we see are actually scientific inquiry. We're looking at, you know, testing with different variables and answering questions. STEM would take it that next step further and say, okay, so now with this knowledge that we've learned, what we've gained through doing this inquiry, how can we apply this to the real world and make change? Um, it's focused on designing, engineering, testing, and inventing ways to improve or you know, make something that we have right now in the present uh, a little bit more efficient or um, to be better. Um, and so that's really the, the push for STEM. Um, and like I said, for the younger levels, when we're looking at you know, kindergarten through third grade, um, when they're just starting to develop you know, their thinking skills and, and processing information, um, they're not gonna be able to do, solve real world problems. 
in that case, we're looking at um, what is the engineering design? What materials are you given and how can you use these materials to design something? And that's the very first step. Um, and that's gonna get them really thinking about that and which applies to the outside world as well. So with this, um, how can we teach STEM using STEM, or how can we teach ag using STEM activities? And um, in a nutshell, it's pretty simple because when we think of agriculture, agriculture is STEM. Everything that we do, um, everything in the ag business is STEM related. Um, I have this really cool video um, that kind of gives you an idea of, it's called How Farming Planted the Seeds for the Internet. And this is a really cool uh, video that you could show in your classrooms, um, you know, and then before the video, before you show it, you could have them, you can ask them the question, you know, what invention do we have right now that has had the most impact on society? And have them fill out a reflection or have them, you know, discuss it, show them the video, and then you can have um, a discussion afterwards. So I'm going to show this video. Um, it's about three and a half minutes long. Um, and we will take a look at this. We talk about inventions and innovation as though the best things out there are the internet, iPads, or smartphones, or perhaps more simply, trains, planes, and automobiles. Which one is the most important, the best or the greatest? Which one has had the most impact on society? Today, the debate would probably be in favor of computer technology, but is it? Well, some would say, nope, not really, it's farming. Where would we be if we didn't have it? Give up? We would still be hunting and gathering with little time to invent anything, let alone the internet. That's right, farming is the seed of civilization. Not quite literally, but without early man's discovery of using seeds to grow grain, we wouldn't have much of anything we have today. Growing your own food changed everything. Sure, hunting and gathering worked just fine for tens of thousands of years, but you couldn't do much else. No time. But when hunters and gatherers started planting seeds, they began to farm. With farming came animals, and with animals came settling down and staying in one location. So how does this have anything to do with invention and innovation? Everything. Anyone who's ever farmed, even if it's planting a half dozen tomato plants in your backyard, knows that you usually harvest way more than you could possibly eat. A surplus. Farming yielded plenty of food with enough to store, trade, and eat. In other words, not everyone needed to be farmers. Therefore, this allowed other people, non-farmers, to do other things, such as make tools, craft pottery, and build homes. Farming and food surpluses led to the division of labor. This is still thousands of years ago, so life wasn't easy. But with so many people contributing to the community, small villages began to develop. Oops, sorry. As the population of villages expanded, so did the needs of the people. Things got complicated. But civilization is just that, advanced complex societies. And without farming, they would not exist. Villages increased in size, eventually becoming the first cities. Cities are just one of the basic features of a civilization. The others include central government, system of writing, organized religion, art and architecture, urban planning of roads, bridges, and public works, social classes, and different jobs. Developing expertise in various types of occupations allowed for innovative ways of doing things, producing new products, or making advancements in technology. As civilizations became more complex, new ways of doing things were needed. Some were out of necessity, others because people had ideas. The sharing of ideas and technology led to the growth of things we readily use today, like the internet. 
So without farming, we'd still be hunting and gathering. No video, no computers, and certainly no World Wide Web. Okay, so that was just a, a short little video. And as you can see, um, they tied in, um, if you use something like this, you can tie in social studies, that history of, you know, civilizations and why they, you know, um, landed where they did and why they decided to, you know, create their towns and cities there. You can do a lot of English language arts when you're looking at reading those fictional or non-fictional um, texts that go along with this. So doing that cross-curricular um, and tying that in with agriculture is a huge thing. Um, all right, so bringing ag focused STEM into the classroom. So um, a huge part of, of teaching, as all of you guys can relate, is, you know, we need to grasp our students' attention. And it's uh, kind of hard nowadays when they're so um, wrapped up in technology and, you know, socializing and um, there's just that negative stigma of, you know, school's boring and, you know, all of that. So we need to find ways to grasp their attention. Um, and just like we saw in the video today, a lot of the things that we have today is largely due to that agriculture is the ability to um, stay where you're settled, have a surplus, trade, you know, have time to come up with ideas and things like that. Um, and so while we think agriculture is like really awesome and we know how important it is, you know, our kiddos might not think the same way. So um, today I'm going to focus on four topics that when I was um, teaching, this topic came up with all of my students, um, regardless of their gender. So sports, cars, fashion, and culinary arts. Um, at the very end, after going through some of these things, I do have more ideas on, you know, animals, gardening, um, conservation and sustainability, gaming, technology, things like that, that you could also use with um, your STEM activities. Okay, so the process. Now, with this, um, a lot of times we can do just independent STEM activities. If it's just something quick where you want them to be engaged, you want them just to get through that engineering process, you give them certain materials and then you have them, you know, work either independently or with a group to build and design something. And that is absolutely fine. Now, when we're talking about STEM activities where there's a little bit more, where you're, you're pushing it a little bit further and you want them to make that uh, connection to um, the real world and how they can solve some sort of problem or at least start critically thinking about it. Um, you want to have a little bit of a background um, uh, steps for them to do. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, this was just one way that I found um, really worked in my classroom and I did it for such a long time without even knowing that it had a name. Um, and so um, you know, it, it might be something as simple as reading about, you know, a native bird species, you know, the food they eat, and then challenging your students to design um, or and build a bird feeder or a bird bath or, you know, what kind of uh, seed are they actually going to eat according to the structure of their beaks, things like that, and then build that feeder, uh, which is appropriate to the area that they live in, which is going to look different, you know, all over even the um, Illinois, but also in the United States. Um, so the process I'm kind of going through is going to be, it's called the five E's, um, and I'm sure many of you guys have heard of this before, um, and even if you haven't, like I said, um, you're probably already doing things very similar to this in your classroom. So the first E is called engage, and this is where you snag their interest. Um, you should, by the beginning of the year, know, uh, have a pretty good idea of what your students are interested in through talking, through all the beginning of the year, get to know you, you know, kind of activities. Um, and so by really understanding what they're interested in and teaching, you know, content focused on that, it really helps them uh, get that engagement. Um, and then you also are getting a good idea of what they already know so that you can either give more background information and build up or move forward. Uh, ways that you can do this, simple uh, KWL, what do you know, what do you want to know, and what did you learn? reading, um, inviting in a speaker in that, um, in that area or that field uh, to come in and uh, speak with them. You could do web quests, look at timelines, you know, the history of sports, the history of fashion, you know, and then connect that with agriculture. And of course, vocabulary is also very important. 
The second E is explore. So this is where you have that hands-on activity. Um, it could be something really simple. If you're familiar with some of our Ag in the Classroom activities, something like the apple chain where they're just looking at the sequencing, you know, how does a seed turn into an apple and they're just cutting out construction and putting it through and just explaining it. Um, or it could be something like an experiment like our Beanie Baby. Um, where they're looking at seed germination and, and watching that uh, soybean seed start to germinate or looking at our soil SAM again with seed germination. Um, so those are really easy, you know, fun, engaging, hands-on activities. The next E is um, explain. And so this is where you're giving your students the opportunity to share what they've learned. Um, you have teacher guided questions to kind of help make those connections that might not be as strong. You want to make sure that they're using the correct vocabulary. Um, you could use worksheets, have group discussions, whole group discussions, compare and contrast, you know, different things like that. Um, the fourth E is elaborate, and it literally just means elaborate what, um, what they learned, uh, and they're taking it that next step forward. Now, um, not every activity that you do necessarily needs to, to move on to like a scientific inquiry, um, but this is a really good step to make it a scientific inquiry and, and dig deeper for that knowledge. So in the same sense with the Beanie Baby, um, if you did that as your explore activity, with your elaboration activity, you could definitely say, okay, well, we started growing the soybeans in, you know, this little um, bag with the, the uh, beads in there. What if we grew it in Mountain Dew? Or what if we grew it with coffee? Or what if we put it in the darkness? What does it actually take for that seed to start germinating? So you're adding variables. You're not just looking at the actual process. Now you're saying what's going to affect that. Um, if you don't have a scientific inquiry, you could definitely do a STEM activity here. That would be absolutely fine. Um, like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do anything um, as long as the kids are, you know, getting that, that understanding, which all of you guys know as teachers that that's the most important part. The fifth E is evaluate, and this is basically your assessment. They're reflecting and providing um, evidence that they understand something, whether you use a CER, which is claim evidence reasoning, um, you're having them do a research paper. Um, for your younger kiddos, you could have them draw a picture. Um, you could do comic strips. You could have them act it out in a play, um, or you could just do your, your uh, old school you know, test or quiz kind of thing. And we have a sixth D, that's the surprise. Um, this is what I call the extension. And this is for really pushing that STEM activity to the next level is making sure that what they learned through all of those first uh, five E's and, and connecting it to the real world. So using recycled materials to build or, or materials of any kind to build, um, drawing out their blueprints so that they can see, you know, I have these materials. If we cut them, you know, this way, how are they going to all fit together? Using apps on their um, computers, their phones, um, like Google Maps, uh, all of these different things where they're, you know, using that technology in there. Um, there's even um, educational Minecraft where they can design a farm or design, you know, different things. Um, Legos, all sorts of different stuff. I do want to show you um, if I can. Let's see here. I'm gonna stop sharing for just a minute. I we have been working this summer on coming up with different worksheets and kind of revamping our older lessons and kind of giving them a really solid layout. So this is one that we we're working on um, with a student worksheet specifically for a STEM activity, so that they're not just you know, kind of screwing around or you you are not having to make the worksheet yourself. You have something right here. Um, so they have to talk about the, the problem or the challenge that they're working on, their list of materials, um, coming up with some questions that might come up through the process. So really thinking, well, as I'm going through this, what could come up? Um, and that's gonna help them be aware of everything uh, before they get started. And then they have their blueprint box, you know, engineers, everybody uses blueprints and they have to revise, you know, many times before they actually do something. This is just a box blank for data, whether you want them to draw, um, you know, just draw their uh, design and label it or draw a graph based on um, their, you know, their, their tests. And then there's a space for reflection. 
you know, did you have to revise um, once you started building? Would you have uh, done it differently? Would uh, other materials have made it better? You know, things like that. And then on every um, page that we're coming out with, we're also going to keep a blank page in there so that you can, uh, if you want them to take notes or, you know, have more uh, observations or anything like that, then that blank worksheet is there as well. Um, we are going to have a worksheet for scientific inquiry as well. Um, so that will be coming out soon. And this worksheet that I just shared with you guys, it's going to um, it's going to be up on our blog this afternoon when we uh, share the video and share um, and share. Uh, sorry, hold on a second. Um, this video and the other resources. So let's see here. Okay, can you guys see this now? Okay. Um, let's see. Let me go to, oh my gosh, where's that at? Okay, so um, moving forward, we're gonna start with sports and agriculture. Sports is a huge thing um, with all students. Um, and um, so I'm gonna kind of just take you through this process of how you can work up to that STEM activity. So with our Engage, you would talk about seed germination, you know, look at some videos of grass growing or um, of different plants growing, look at that whole process, look at diagrams, um, you know, things like that. And for this specific activity, uh, the STEM one that I'm gonna be talking about, um, you would probably wanna explain that farmers actually grow grass. So you could look into some geography. Where are some areas in the United States or even in the world where grass doesn't grow and why doesn't it grow there? And so looking at weather and you know, um, location and all that kind of stuff. Then for your explore activity, you could do something like soil SAM or grass letter. So for those of you who are not familiar, um, this is our little soil SAM guy, and this is our grass letter. So it's just growing grass. Um, you have pantyhose and you put seeds in there in soil, and then um, you can put googly eyes and dress them up. That could be another uh, fun thing for our lower level kiddos is, you know, um, maybe the, you say you have three buttons and, you know, use a blue button if you have um, a dog or a green button if you have a cat or a purple button if you have both. And so it could be something where it really relates to them. And so you can learn about each other that way. Um, but in the bottom, it's full of water, which kind of helps um, keep the plant hydrated and it grows. This is um, just construction paper with uh, um, a stick of glue and then you put grass seed on there and then it starts to plant. Um, you'd want to put it into some soil so that it actually has nutrients and whatnot, um, which you could do in your classroom. You could plant them right outside your classroom window if you happen to have a window there um, or maybe there's an area at your school where it's designated where you can, you know, do a little experiment. So they can write their names, um, initials, things like that. And then this is um, an example of what I'm going to uh, use later, but it's the beanie baby. So we have our soybean seeds and you put them in there um, and then you can watch, uh, you know, the seed germinate. So after you do the exploration activity, then you're going to explain, you know, maybe have them come up with a comic strip from um, the seeds point of view or, you know, looking at that process. It could be something fun. Maybe if you um, are kind of tech savvy and your kids um, are really familiar with different um, apps, they could make a quick video, um, something really fun. Your elaboration would then be that scientific inquiry. We're looking at um, now what variables do we have? So with your soil, Sam, your little guy, maybe instead of water at the bottom, you put in Mountain Dew. Um, or you put in coffee and you say, okay, well, Mountain Dew has, you know, it helps us like, you know, have all this energy. Would that give energy to the plant to grow? Or, you know, maybe we put different types of fertilizer in there, or different types of soil. How is that going to affect um, the, the growth of his your little soil Sam's hair. Um, and so that is taking, they already understand seed germination and then they're going in and saying, okay, now what is going to affect that? And that's a really good background information to have to understand, you know, farming and agriculture, that there's a lot of different variables that um, our farmers and everybody in the ag organization really has to understand. 
your evaluation quiz time or have them present. You could set it up as like a little small science fair kind of thing, anything like that for you to see that they understand. And then with your STEM, this is the fun part. Your STEM activity doesn't necessarily have to be seed germination. They understand seed germination. Now they're making that connection. So um, if you had looked at um, any of our uh, everyday ag lessons um, when we were doing all of the states, uh, the state of Oregon actually has um, a large amount of land for uh, turf grass, that farmers grow turf grass for different organizations. They have um, used their grass in the Olympics, um, in the FIFA World Cups a few times in South America. Um, and so that's kind of where this connection to the foosball table is. So here's an example of a foosball table. Give them the option to use different materials. Maybe instead of uh, wooden skewers, they have the option to use straws um, or, you know, different um, uh, materials to make the people. Their thing is to make the measurements. Okay, so how, how high up do these sticks have to be so that the players, their feet are touching the, not necessarily touching the bottom to scratch, but that they're far enough down to hit whatever, um, maybe it's a marble or like a little ping pong ball or something so that it can like actually kick. Um, how far away do they have to be from the edges? So they're doing a lot of math. They're engineering using, you know, different materials and they're coming up with something that relates to your agriculture. You would definitely want to look into the fact that, um, you know, we have those turf grass growers um, and it's a huge business. You could even take it a step further and look at other areas, other businesses in the United States that probably buy their grass. Um, and then again, look at the climate, look at all that kind of stuff, and then look into farming in those areas. What do farmers do? You know, if, if we know that they have to buy grass, uh, you know, this company has to buy grass, um, then what, do, what are farmers doing? How do other plants grow in that area? Um, and so those are just some different ideas that you can use. Um, have them write about it, look into the history um, of uh, FIFA or, you know, different, um, where did soccer come from? What, how, what does it look like? You know, things like that. Then you can take it a little bit further, but they know now that it relates to agriculture. Some more sports uh, STEM ideas, um, design a football punter. Again, going off the idea with using grass, a lot of sporting arenas use real grass. Um, and so you can say, okay, we'll design um, a football punter. They're looking at folding pieces of paper, looking at that math and geometry. You know, what angle is gonna be perfect to get right over um, the goalposts? Um, how much force do they need to um, flick it over? Things like that. Uh, they could design a park. Um, we have a lot of communities who need parks or their parks need to be redone. So looking at, you know, the location, what kind of plants do you want around? Um, how much is it going to cost? What kind of materials do you need? And they could actually use Google Maps and look at areas in their um, community and say, okay, well, this would be a perfect spot for that. And then we could bring in plants that attract pollinators. And we might need some different material to go under the playground. What's the best, um, you know, to use for that? They could design their own golf course or putt-putt golf course um, for your um, upper level kiddos looking at you know, how do they maintain golf courses in the grass and how much water they, do they use to water it and um, looking at the hills and, and the, the layout of the trees and everything. That, that is something that is actually, um, you know, considered when people are, are creating these golf courses. Your lower level students, uh, putt putt golf courses, you know, what are some cool obstacles? What angles do the balls need to be shot at to make it into um, that hole? Uh, what materials are needed? You know, how, what's the skill level for each hole, um, you know, intermediate to advanced, things like that. You could also do a design on indoor sports arena. Again, looking at that need for the grass on the inside and then um, having some fun with it um, with your higher level kiddos add uh, that connection to the real world. How do you reduce waste of food at sporting events? We're looking at the fact that you have hot dogs, popcorn, peanut, chips, all of that, and the materials that are used for all of those. You could say, well, how could we eliminate some of this waste? You could even then take it a step further and look at, well, how do we get hot dogs? Where does our popcorn come from? What about peanuts? Where are they grown? How are they grown? You know, and chips, you know? Um, so you could definitely then continue um, that um, that connection to agriculture. A couple of books here, 
uh, just for um, some resources, The Most Magnificent Thing. Um, this is a great uh, uh, book, especially for um, our lower level kiddos looking at kindergarten through third grade. I would even use this in my sixth or even eighth grade class. Um, kids are never too young for children's books because sometimes the wording is just so simple and straightforward that they need those reminders and it makes sense to them. But this book is about um, this little girl who, you know, has this awesome idea and it doesn't work and then she's got to, you know, keep revising and redoing it and then it turns out to be, you know, something that she really loves and it's magnificent. And then Peggy Thomas, Full of Beans, um, looking at uh, a little bit of history here, Henry Ford growing his car using soybeans. So again, making that connection um, to soybeans. All right, I'm going to take a few minutes and answer any questions. So let me see. Um, Cross-curricular activities are perfect for early elementary, absolutely. Um, especially at that age, they're so curious and, and they just, they're just so curious about everything and how it all works together. Um, and so it's definitely pulling in that background knowledge with mentor text, manipulatives, all of that is a fantastic way, um, especially before you do your STEM activity. So they're already kind of thinking about that before they do their STEM activity. Um, elaborate and evaluate, it definitely could be merged together. So um, we have a question, could elaborate and evaluate be merged together to differentiate for ESL or special ed students? Absolutely. Um, there is no right or wrong way to do the steps of 5E and um, you have to make it you know, fit your classroom. So if you do merge those together um, and then make that those steps of differentiating either for your, um, your lower level or higher level students, absolutely, you could definitely do that. Um, and you don't have to follow those five E steps. Um, it just kind of makes sense on, on kind of building. And like I said before, most of you guys are already, you know, doing it like this. So you could definitely merge those together for um, one way to differentiate that, um, um, that activity, absolutely. All right, it looks like those are all of our questions so far. I'm going to move on. All right, so cars, cars and agriculture. So this is a really cool one. Um, and I know that we have really talked with Illinois Ag in the classroom, especially this, well, since I've started. Um, there's one specific video that um, I, I'm going to share if I have time, but it'll be up on the uh, the blog later this afternoon um, if I don't have time to share it. Um, but this is a cool one. So with soybeans, you know, we're looking at Beanie Baby, that uh, same seed uh, germination, invite a soybean farmer in, you know, get them understanding soybeans, look at diagrams, um, all of that kind of stuff. Your exploration uh, activity could be Beanie Baby, you're explaining, um, short answer, comic strip. It's kind of fun. Um, and actually, uh, Kevin had somebody come up with um, uh, like a graphic novel kind of thing with a twist of the, the perspective of the, of the soybean and you know how it takes to uh, germinate. And so that could be a really fun way to get your, your students um, you know, engaged uh, and a way to explain what they understood from a, doing the Beanie Baby experiment. And it would also connect to your ELA uh, activity, that cross-curricular of, you know, uh, coming up with perspective, maybe looking at speech bubbles and dialogue, you know, things like that. Um, emotion, your, your facial expressions. With your elaboration, very similar to what I said earlier, um, you know, adding those different variables. Uh, we know that it takes, you know, certain things for a seed to start growing. Um, but a lot of people say sunlight. Well, when a seed is buried in the ground, it's under the soil, so it's not necessarily getting sunlight. So one thing you could do is say, is it heat or is it sunlight? And then put your, uh, your little beanie babies in different areas and then have them um, record their data, you know, look at the difference of the growth over a certain amount of time. Um, they're recording their answers. They might take out their rulers and start um, measuring like the growth of, of the, the seed and all of that. And so that would be um, another way to connect that. Evaluate have them write a claim evidence reasoning um, or, you know, compare and contrast their hypothesis to what the conclusion was, things like that. Now your extension, um, this is a fun one. Now this could be considered, you could do it for um, all levels. However, it might be a little bit better to do as an upper level. I would say sixth 
grade and up, and even sixth grade might be a little bit challenging. Um, so this would be a really cool one also for high school, but uh, you could use biomaterials to design a car. And that idea comes from this TED talk um, where uh, she has, um, she works for Ford and she talks about how, you know, 10% uh, of the cars that we have are made from plastic and they're petroleum based plastic and it bothers her. And so her job is to come up with ideas on how we can use biomaterials um, to uh, replace some of those petroleum based plastics and other materials in the car. Um, since we're kind of long time, I'm not going to um, play the video, but this video will be up on um, the blog this afternoon. Um, so please, please take the opportunity to look at it. She is such a fantastic speaker. Um, and another thing, just on a side note, if you are um, high school or even maybe eighth grade, another thing that you could tie in is looking at um, uh, careers. We have a female in a predominantly male uh, run industry with cars and science. And so uh, kind of breaking down um, those barriers and saying, well, uh, we have so many people interested and here's what you can do and then start looking into different careers. Um, so for example, she talks about how they use the outside of, a, of the coconut, the, the hair of the coconut to be um, uh, part of the mats uh, that you put in, in your trunk. And so that's one idea is like, okay, so I see this coconut, it's got this texture. Where else have I seen that texture before? Or take your students out to look at a car, look at different um, things within a vehicle and try to have them compare it to different organic materials that we have seen you know, in real life. What does that remind you of? Um, what does this look like? How, what could we um, use to create this? Another great thing about this video is that she talks about the byproduct of tomatoes. We use so many, um, I think she said 200 million pounds of tomatoes, uh, Heinz uh, Corporation does to make ketchup, but they don't use the stem, the leaves or the seeds. And so she says, well, what could we do with those as a byproduct instead of wasting them and, and filling up landfills or anything like that? What we could we do? Well, she found a way or her, her organization and everybody that she works with to turn those into plastics. And um, then she says that the, the cool thing is that it turns out red because of the color of tomatoes. And so you can have these like different plastics in your car and like the engine um, that no one really cares about. Um, and, and they're, you know, um, from those tomatoes. So that's pretty cool. For your younger level kiddos, you have, um, you could have them design a car and, you know, race them. What kind of design is gonna be the fastest? Well, however, you're gonna be using vegetables and fruits. So what shaped vegetables do you know? Um, even if you're using, um, you know, really lower level. So like uh, maybe kindergarten, first grade, you could look at colors, um, shapes, all of that kind of stuff. What materials is gonna hold them together? Is an orange as a wheel gonna be better than a grape? Just because the grape is smaller, we might think, oh, well, it might move faster. Um, so you can get them thinking about that, have them draw it, have them design it, and then build it and put it together. They might find that they need to have revisions, um, which is exactly what you want to do with STEM. And so then you can take it a step further and say, okay, now you have this vehicle, think about how companies are making cars, what everything that it takes for them um, to come up with uh, making sure it's safe, making sure it's, you know, efficient and all of that kind of stuff. You could even then go into um, the different types of um, gasoline, you know, and, um, and ethanol and all of that for your upper level uh, students. And then just a kind of fun one to pull in some history, you know, design a wagon um, to pull crop. Let's say you live, you know, X amount of miles away from where the closest marketplace is, but you have to go over some rocky, you know, terrain and you have to go across a river. Uh, you need to design a wagon think about what's gonna pull it and how you're gonna get across that terrain and see who's can get across that terrain and hold the most amount of weight. Um, so a couple of little books that kind of go along with that and tying in history, um, Apples to Oregon, where they really come across some of those um, those obstacles and then the ox cart man really looking at how uh, people did have to leave and you know their, their communities or their homes from miles away to um, go and try to sell their their uh, produce and, and what they had to offer. So that would be fun. You could also even do a boat kind of thing um, and look at, well, how much weight will a boat hold? Look at buoyancy, all of that fun stuff.
Okay, fashion and agriculture. Fashion is such a huge thing, name, brand, everything. Um, my kids always talked about that kind of stuff. So one idea is just something simple. You could create your own umbrella that would, could withstand different um, amounts of rain, make it fun and say, it's, can it withstand, you know, raining cats and dogs. Um, they would have to design it, come up with the materials, um, think about, okay, well, what's waterproof and, and um, how much, uh, you know, in, in our winter coats that we wear or our raincoats, what kind of materials are they using? Where do those materials come from? Are they synthetic? Are they organic? You can definitely look into that and then look into um, uh, maybe making bracelets. Okay, so if they have cotton, you know, then you can look into the cotton gin, look into um, where does cotton come from? How does it grow? Where does it grow? Have them tear cotton apart and roll it up and then, you know, braid um, a bracelet. They can learn about different types of braids, different types of knots. You can have different materials in there to compare textures or compare where and how they're grown. Um, and then this is a little book that goes along when they're looking at plastic waste. So again, looking at sustainability, um, conserving our land, reducing pollution, all of that. Um, and then we have a major problem with plastic bags. And so you could I'm sure all of us have, you know, a thousand bags within bags at our house. You can bring them in and have them um, make bracelets or make some sort of jewelry. Create a marketplace, have them barter, learn how to barter, learn how to sell. Um, you could use it as an incentive, like in, in, you know, you could make up your own cash and give them cash and say, okay, you need to save this for the marketplace day. Um, and so that would be um, an incentive, you know, for um, positive reinforcement. Uh, uniforms, we could look at um, how uh, pig farmers really need to have that protective uh, outfits before they go in and, and um, they're doing their job. So have them research that. What's the cost of the materials? What's the measurements that they need to fit, you know, an adult? Um, what are the best materials? Where do those materials come from? Um, designing a tennis shoe or sandal, all of this picture right here, this is all cardboard. So then you could look in where does cardboard come from, where do paper products come from, um, look at that agriculture background, and then have them um, design a shoe, looking into measurements, um, comfort, uh, how would they sell it, could they promote it, do they make um, an Instagram page or, you know, something, and so looking into that business uh, side of all of this as well. Um, or they could design and sew. Um, this is more for our Arts for Life classes if they're in a sewing program. You know, uh, maybe they have to use geometry to come up with a pattern, you know, for um, some sort of skirt or, you know, something fun. So those are some different fashion activities. And now we have culinary arts. Um, so create your own bread recipe. Um, and promote it. So when we're thinking about bread, everybody loves bread and pasta and carbs. They're so delicious. Um, and so maybe you're looking at recipes and you're looking at measurements um, of the different ingredients. What's going to happen if you're supposed to have one teaspoon of salt and you put in two teaspoons of salt? What would the outcome be? Um, and so really making sure that they understand measurements for your, um, for your younger kiddos, kindergarten through first grade, bring out little circles, pie charts, things where they can look at um, um, you know, what is a half compared to a fourth, um, things like that. And they don't have to make the bread there. You could even just uh, look at the yeast, see that it's alive, see that that's what you need. Um, and then you could go home and, and bake it at home and then bring it back or just watch a video or have a baker come in and, um, you know, talk to them about the process, you know, things like that. You can have them design a solar oven where they are, you know, they can take it outside and create, you know, make their own s'mores, which is fun. You could look into, well, where do marshmallows come from? You know, like, um, where does chocolate come from? How is it grown? Um, what about those areas in our world that have very limited resources um, because of where they're living? Um, and a really cool book that goes along with this is um, Iqbal and his ingenious idea. And basically, um, he lives in an area where they don't have electricity for ovens. And um, so, you know, how, how can we get, um, without having to build a fire, without uh, needing all these tools, what could we do? And he comes up with this idea to design a solar oven, use the sun um, to, to cook their food. And so that's a really fun book that would go along with this. Um, tying in that social studies, the cross-curricular, 
you could even do a research, have them choose a place in the world to uh, research and then come up with an idea of how you could, you know, help or, or help get, you know, resources to that area. Um, windmill, you could have them create a windmill. Uh, the Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is a fantastic book. I mean, it's also a great movie, although there are subtitles. So if you do show it in your classroom for your upper class uh, kiddos, there are a lot of subtitles you got to read. Um, but, you know, look at the, the use of windmill um, uses in uh, agriculture, the history of windmills. And then when you read this book, you find out that they really need it um, to create um, electricity and uh, to get water to flower or flower to water their crop, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, looking at milk. Uh, Chris last week just talked about milk and, and he and his um, son Lincoln had created that milk plastic. So maybe you can start talking about, you know, like the negative use of petroleum based plastics. What do we actually use plastic for and are there better materials to use? And so you could start with making plastic from milk and maybe, okay, what, what could you, um, what's one thing that you could use this for? Is it like a little bowl for, you know, jewelry or something or um, make something um, that could actually be used. That would be a fun one. Um, I did this uh, design your own restaurant where they had to have the exact um, area measurements, everything. They had to talk about where their food come, came from, um, what type of food, how they would run it. And I did that with sixth grade kiddos and they had a blast. And actually when they presented um, this, uh, they would bring in uh, food for the whole class of where their restaurant was. So we had a donut store and they brought in um, Krispy Kreme for everybody. Um, not that you have to do that. And I know, um, especially with COVID now and, um, and allergies, that might not be a possibility, but um, you know, for sixth grade and up, have them design that restaurant, uh, looking at measurements, area, you know, table space, all of that kind of stuff. If they're saying that there are they're a donut store, well, how are donuts made? Where does where do those ingredients come from? What are the ingredients? What are the measurements for those ingredients? So you're tying in all of that stuff. And then the last one is uh, fruit packaging. You could, uh, we have a lot of fruit delivered to stores. So how do we keep them from being bruised? And what is, um, what's one way that we could maybe protect the fruit a little bit more in that process? Um, here are just some random ideas, agriculture and technology, looking at farming equipment, tractors, um, uh, self-driving tractors, um, drones that help uh, farmers look at the, the um, nitrogen level in their fields, which we have a lot of information in our soybean ag mag, um, different apps on iPhones or phones that help farmers. Um, you know, how do we get fresh water in areas that don't have fresh water? And that's a lot of... Um, with conservation as well. And The Water Princess is a fantastic book that goes along with that. Um, animal husbandry, food, how do we get food for the livestock? What is in their food? Um, native animal habitats, you could look at anatomy and physiology, have them build a chicken coop. If you guys are raising eggs in your classroom, um, that's fantastic. If not, we did a whole video series, egg in your eggs in your classroom um, that Chris um, and his son had done all these awesome videos um, so you could you know, use those in your classroom and then have them design and build a chicken coop um, or hay house storage and then gardening, something a little bit closer to home. You know, what can we do for our pollinators? What native plants do they need? Um, you know, birds, uh, especially for urban uh, schools, if you look at, well, how do we uh, create community gardens or how do I make my own food when I live, you know, in an area surrounded by cement? So you could look at urban gardening, vertical gardening, um, and then composting and vermicomposting. So I know that was a ton of information. We have about five minutes left. Um, and then compost too is a great one for your gardening um, section. So as you can see, there are tons of ways that you can create STEM activities um, and relate them to agriculture. And the STEM activity itself doesn't have to be ag related like it doesn't have to be you know um, design a tractor which is also a super ton of fun when you're looking at farming equipment and we had that competition which was awesome but in order to grasp your kiddos interests with the fashion the cars the sports um, making that connection is what's important doing all of the background teaching about grass, teaching about seed germination, teaching about farming and ag, and then tying that into your STEM activity is what is the most important. Um, okay, 
We have about five-ish, four-ish minutes left. So I'm gonna take the rest of the time. Um, if, if you feel good about all of this, feel free um, to, to go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you have some more questions, I'm gonna stick around and answer any questions that come up in the chat. Um, otherwise, don't forget to join us back here on Thursday and then next week for the National um, Ag in the Classroom um, conference. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. It's supposed to be beautiful. A little bit hot though. Yes, you're very welcome, you guys. Please feel free to send emails with questions. Check our blog later, um, beyondthebarndoor.wordpress.com, um, and this slideshow presentation will be up. Uh, the two videos from the slideshow will be up. Links to those books will be up there, um, and that STEM worksheet will also be attached to that. So all of that will be up there. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, I do feel so out of practice. It's also weird to talk to people on a screen and not actually be in front of people and doing STEM related stuff. <laughs> Um, you don't need anything special to join if you check the email. So we have a question. Do you need anything special to join the national convention? Um, all you got to do is in the email where you found the link for today. Um, there is a link that um, will take you to uh, their um, website so that you can register. It's all free. You just have to register and then you can um, choose the classes that you want to be in. Um, the letter grass growing, um, we've had some issues with it not being able to grow. Sometimes it might be difficult depending on, um, you know, how old the seed is. You might want to try putting the construction paper once they, once you get the letter on the construction paper, uh, you could buy those tin foil like baking trays and put some um, dirt and stuff in there and then put it in there and water it. And so because the construction paper um, doesn't have like the nutrients it needs to actually keep growing, it will start to germinate, but it won't have the nutrients to grow. So you want to give it some sort of nutrients to um, actually start growing. So try that with your, um, with the grass growing uh, letters. Um, the name of the video that I, I didn't show, but it, I was going to show is called Sitting on Soybeans, um, Making a Bioactive Car. Um, and it's a TEDx talk. Um, and so you can just uh, search that in Google um, or again, check back on the blog this afternoon and that video um, will, uh, will be posted. And again, with the, the grass letter, just make sure that it's um, consistently moist. You wanna make sure that, it's, um, that it stays uh, moist. So Chris suggested maybe a humidity dome to keep in the moisture, um, you know, things like that. So definitely those, those seeds need some some extra water uh, to, to start to germinate, but don't drown them. You don't want to drown them. All right, let's see. Oh, awesome. Yes, blooming to normal. Awesome. I think I'm going to stay on here for about two more minutes to answer questions and then we will call it a day. Again, thank you guys all so much for joining us. It's such an awesome thing. And if you guys um, somehow deleted that email, um, Chris also posted the, um, the national conference link in the, the chat. So if you wanna, if you don't know where your email is or um, just wanna uh, click on that, that's fine. It's right in that chat. Thank you. I'm gonna give about one more minute.
<clears throat> All right, it looks like we don't have any more questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and end um, the conference. Again, thank you guys so much and I hope you have a rest, a great rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.